Stop the FOMO. You ever fear of missing out on a brighter OLED TV? Oh yeah, in 2021, brighter OLED TVs from LG Display. The question is, how are they doing this? Well, there are two approaches. We're gonna go over the two possible ways that LG is doing this, and more importantly, how much is it going to cost your pocketbook? So today, LG is going to make like Jupiter and Saturn and get just a little bit brighter. Although OLED TVs look great, they have two issues that have been plaguing it from its inception. The first is the risk of burn-in, but it's gotten a lot better, so I don't hear that as being the huge issue it used to be. For a few gamers, maybe, because they continue to watch or play games that have that persistent static logo, but for most people who watch various content, burn-in is not that big of a deal. It's the second one that a lot of people complain about now, and that is brightness. OLED TVs simply don't get bright enough, well, until this year at least. Starting in 2021, LG Display appears to have committed to selling a brighter OLED. The question is, how is it doing this? And more importantly, how much is it gonna cost you? Starting with the how. Well, actually it wasn't LG that figured it out. It's Panasonic. For the last two years, Panasonic has been selling the GZ2000 and the HZ2000. Both models hit 1,000 nits of peak brightness. That's over 30% more than any of LG's OLEDs or Sony OLEDs or any other OLED for that matter because Panasonic is doing something special with this OLED. What it does is it's included a cooler, some kind of a plate cooler technology inside the OLED display that, well, if you can cool it, you can push it brighter without it overheating. That obviously gets it brighter, but more importantly, it doesn't shorten the life of the OLED. So here's what's happening. An article by Reiji Asakura that I've linked below, he's a Japanese TV reviewer. He explained that Panasonic has been working on this closely with LG, but this is unique to Panasonic's own proprietary approach. It appears that they are allowing LG to sell a reference TV with that technology included for other TV makers. Now, whether it's as good as Panasonic's version remains to be seen, but most critically, LG now has access to that same cooling technology that Panasonic has been using successfully for the last two years now, and we expect much of the same from Panasonic next year. So this being the case, it appears that LG, if it utilizes Panasonic's approach and is able to now sell it fully packaged to Sony, Philips, maybe Vizio, we're going to get brighter OLEDs across the board, but, Here's the big but. <laughs> it's not going to be cheap. Panasonic sells this model for two to three times more than its regular mainstream, less bright models, and I don't expect LG to do it any differently. But there's a second way. Flat Panels HD believes that there's an alternate approach that doesn't necessarily use Panasonic's cooling plate. It may be using a different manufacturing or a different chemical emitter. And I suspect maybe they're referring to the top emissions approach. Right now, currently OLEDs from LG display that we see every day from Sony, Philips, Panasonic, and LG Electronics, and Vizio are bottom emissions manufactured OLED. Top emissions is more efficient, will be brighter, but also more expensive. And I haven't heard that this approach is being utilized or will be utilized for the mainstream OLED products that should be very budget conscious. Remember, LG wants its OLEDs to be accessible to the general public. It doesn't mean that it won't reserve the top emissions for its best OLEDs, right? So it could be that it is top emissions as well, but even more expensive OLEDs will be using it. We're talking flagship, maybe 8K OLEDs. But we know for sure that Panasonic's cooling plate OLED, first, it works. Second, it's probably more reliable now that we're in the third year of its production and fine tuning. 
top emissions, this would literally be the first year that we're getting mainstream OLED products using top emissions. So I don't know how, well, how cheaply it could be done, and more importantly, what the yields will be like, right? So it may be a while before top emissions becomes a thing, but we'll find out shortly once we get the details out of CES 2021. But the big question for everyone though is this, how much brighter are we talking about? So for some perspective, currently, the LG C10 at a 1%, a 2%, and a 5% window are around 740 nits. The HZ2000, Panasonic's brightest OLED, is at 1,000 nits at the 1%, 2%, and 5% window. That's simply amazing. When you consider that the Samsung Q90T is less than 1,000 nits at the 1%, 2%, and 5% window, how big are these windows? <laughs> well, actually, frankly, they're actually pretty large. As you can see, from 1% to 5%, this is easily large enough for HDR impact, right? When you wanna go from the dark scene to an explosion, one to 2% to 5% window is all you need to get that impact. Obviously, as the window gets larger, that's where the Samsung Q90T gets brighter. But keep this in mind, the reason that's possible is when you have local dimming zones, if the dimming zones get too bright on a small window, blooming is a problem. So to control blooming, the 1% window is restricted in its brightness, as well as the 2% window. If those windows are too bright, which it can easily do, well, blooming just takes away from the whole contrast and the image quality, right? It suddenly isn't competitive with OLED anymore. So for the Q90T to compete with OLED, it's one, and 2% windows are actually lower in brightness <laughs> to avoid blooming issues. So with Panasonic's technology, if LG could fully implement it to the same effectiveness as Panasonic, we're talking the OLEDs could actually get brighter. Peak brightness is brighter than the Q90T. This is gonna be huge. And this is probably why Samsung is moving to mini LED this year. The mini LED will allow them to get brighter while also controlling the blooming at the darker levels. But it remains to be seen how Samsung's first year of mini LED will do. I'll tell you this though, the Panasonic HZ2000 and GZ2000 are proven technologies that look phenomenal and it will be coming to the USA. Yes, I forgot to mention that. So Panasonic OLEDs, these amazing OLEDs, that have been out for the last two years have not been available in the US until Robert Zone and Value Electronics convinced Panasonic to bring it to the USA and allow them to sell it. They are the exclusive retailer for these Panasonic TVs. And how good are these Panasonic OLED TVs? Well, they are what Robert describes as client monitoring for Hollywood level. We're talking picture quality of that exceeds the Sony Master Series, but we'll see what Sony comes up with in 2021. But then Sony now has access to the Panasonic bright panel technology, right? If LG is sharing it with all of the TV makers, that means Sony could be using Panasonic's brighter OLED to fight Panasonic, or maybe Sony can go with QD OLED, but I don't think QD OLED will be ready for the 2021 launch more likely 2022. Nevertheless, it'll be so interesting to see whether Sony embraces Panasonic's brighter cooling technology for its OLED TVs in 2021. And speaking of Panasonic, we have another exciting announcement. But before we get there, don't forget, after this video, there's more here, 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 and here for you to watch. Next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific Time, we will have Robert Zone on live stream to talk about how he brought Panasonic OLED TVs to the US and answer your questions about these amazing OLED TVs. So don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, stop the FOMO. <laughs>